Hello students, Mr. Courtney here and we're continuing on measurements and calculations and in this video we're talking specifically about percentages or percentage. We're going to define percentages or percentage solve problems involving percentage, calc define and calculate percent error and also we're going to look at percent composition. So why are percentages important? Why is percentage important? Now let's use this example here. So during practice for the young generation basketball team, Garfield consistently makes nine free throws out of 20. Jeff consistently makes eight free throws out of 10. 10. Whom would the coach rather have at the free throw line during the game? Now, even though Garfield has made a greater number of free, free throws, nine versus eight, we would rather Jeff at the free throw line because he makes a higher percentage of his free throws. Now, if we do not understand the concept of percent, we would easily make this mistake and let Garfield shoot the free throw, for example, if we're, we obtain a technical foul. Since Jeff makes a higher percentage of his free throws, we would prefer to have Jeff at the free throw line during. So what is a percentage? A percentage is part out of 100, or you can say it's a fraction with its denominator as 100. A fraction with a denominator of 100. So how do we calculate percentage? Percentage is part divided by the whole times 100. So we take the fraction of the whole and then we multiply by 100 to make it out of 100. Okay, so let's look at some examples. You earned 15 points on your last chemistry quiz. The maximum number of points you could have earned was 20. What percentage of the possible points did you get? correct. So the points earned was 15. Maximum points possible was 20. So the percent correct is what we want to find. So percent correct will be your points earned divided by the maximum points. Remember a fraction of the whole. So this here is the fraction of the whole. The points earned divided by the maximum points times 100. Then we substitute the values we know. 15 divided by 20 then we multiply by 100 to make it out of 100, and that gives us 75%. Now, you should know the, this already because that's how I grade my quiz, quizzes. So you should know how to calculate your percentage in terms of grades already. How many grams of salt and how many grams of water are needed to prepare 85 grams of a solution that is 12.0% salt? So let's look at what we're given. Again, analyze. We know 12% salt means we have 12 out of 100 or 12 grams per 100 grams of solution. 12 grams of salt, sorry, per 100 grams of solution. The whole would be 85 grams of solution because that's what we want to make. What we don't know is the part, how many grams of salt we need to make that. So we can set up a ratio. We know that 12 out of the 100 would be equal to x over 85 so part over the whole part over the whole so this here is our whole in terms of a hundred this is the whole in terms of what we're given so we can use that ratio to solve for x 12 times 85 divided by 100 that gives us 10.2 grams of salt so that's the answer to one part of the question because we want how many grams of salt and how many grams of water are needed so if our total mass would be 85 grams, then our grams of salt of salt is 10.2. So then our grams of water would be 85 minus 10.2. So that's 74.8 grams of water. In an experiment, 561 grams of copper were recovered from a pure sample of a mineral with a copper content of 52 of 25.5%. What is the mass of the mineral used in the experiment? So let's look at what we're given. We're given a percent copper, which is 25.5. We know the parts of copper is 50, 561 grams. So we want to know the whole, how many grams of the mineral we had. So again, 25.5 would be 25 out, 25 .5 out of 100. 56 point, 561, sorry, represents the part in terms of the total mass of our mineral. So that and the total mass of the mineral is X. So we use that same ratio, 25.5 over 100 is equal to 561 over X. And then we can solve for X 
by multiplying 561 by 100 and divided by 25.5, that gives us 2,200 grams of the mineral. Now, percent error. So when you think of an error, you think of something being a mistake being made. So we have our accepted value, which is the correct value for the measurement. When we take measurements in the lab, there will be some error associated with it because we will never get the exact value as we suppose or that we expect. So the accepted value is the correct value of the measurement. The experimental value is what we obtained, what we measured in the lab or from the experiment. Or we calculated that value. So the error is the difference between the experimental value and the accepted value. Our percent error is the absolute value of that difference. The experimental value minus our accepted value. Take the absolute value of it. Divide by the accepted value and multiply by 100. When we say the absolute value, what is meant here is that we take in the, the, just the number. We ignore the sign. We only look at the magnitude of that value. We don't care if it's positive or negative. We just look at the difference between the experimental value and our accepted value. So in this example, a student measures the mass of a volume of a substance and calculates its density, density as 1.40 grams per milliliter. The correct value of the density is 1.30 grams per milliliter. So what is the percentage error of the student's measurement? So we know to calculate percent error, we take the experimental value minus our accepted value, take the absolute value of it, divide by the accepted value times 100. We know what these values are. Our experimental value is 1.40. Our accepted value is 1.30. So we divide the difference of that, these two values, by 1.30. Now look at the units. We have grams per milliliter at the top and grams per milliliter at the bottom. So when we subtract grams per milliliter in 1.40 minus 1.3, our units will be in grams per milliliter. And then we're going to divide by grams per milliliter. So all these will cancel. So when we look at percent error, we don't really have a unit, except we're going to say it's in percent at the end. And that gives us 7.69%. Now, a food scientist tests his equipment. And his equipment is called a bomb calorimeter. And he measures the amount of calories in a serving of, serving of peanuts and compare his va this value with a known standard value. Using his instrument, the scientist measures and calculates 172 calories per serving. The known standard is 185 calories per serving. What is the percent error? So we know what percent error is. We know our accepted value and our experimental value. Experimental value was 172. And our actual value, our accepted value is 185. Find the absolute value, the absolute, absolute difference of these two, 172 minus 185. Divide by our accepted value, multiply by 100, we get 7.03%. So that's our percent error. Now let's look at percent composition. That is the percent make of a, sub, of a substance by mass. So we look at the percent composition of each component in that substance. So we take the mass of the component, divide by the total mass times 100. It's still a percent, so it's still out of 100, hence we multiply by 100. And it's part over the whole. So the mass of each component, the total mass of each component, divided by the total mass of the substance. So it's a fraction of the whole times 100. Okay, in this example, we asked to determine the composition of a ham and cheese sandwich with the following composition. We're given a mass of one slice of bread, the mass of ham used, the mass of cheese, and the mass of the mayonnaise used. So the first thing we need to find is the total mass of the sandwich. We know we have two slices of bread, the ham, the cheese, and the mayonnaise. So since each slice of bread is 8.51 grams, we multiply it by two because we're going to use two slices. Add the 18.56 grams for the ham, 6.60 grams for the cheese, and the 0.95 grams for the mayonnaise. That gives us a total of 43.13 grams. 
Now to find the percentage of the bread, percentage composition of the bread. That is the mass of the bread, the two slices of bread combined, 17.02, divided by the total mass, a fraction of the whole, times 100, that gives us 39.46. Now, when you're doing percentage calculations, you need to show that you're multiplying by 100 because there's no way you take 17.02 divided by 43.13 and end up with 39.46 if you did not multiply by 100. So if you just write that seven, write the numbers, you divide the numbers and did not multiply by 100, that is what I call impossible math because you cannot do that you must multiply by 100 to show that it is percentage. Percent ham. You take the mass of the ham, 18.56 divided by 43.3. We multiply by 100, we get 43.03. Percent cheese would be 6.60 divided by 43.13 times 100. That gives us 15.30. And for the percent mayonnaise, we take the 0.95 grams Divided by the total mass of 43.3, again, fraction of the whole times 100, 2.20%. Now, remember, when you add your percentages together, they will add to 100. All right, so we've looked at percentages. We've done calculations with percentages. We looked at percent error. We looked at percent composition. So that takes us to the end of this video. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.